Welcome to the June 9th, 2020 episode of Reactive Consciousness, our in-depth podcast about what happened this week in our lives. I'm your host, Vice the Bold, and this is... Lotus Prince. And we have another wonderful week here for you, trying to get you a little distracted from the wor- real-world events. <laughs> a lot of craziness going on, but um, a lot of... Um, a, lo- a lot of serious stuff. So, um, but uh, we'll, we'll provide some distraction here for everybody, and uh, 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 we'll we'll go on from there. But uh, first up, uh, probably the biggest news of this week, um, uh, which is saying a lot because there it wasn't a whole lot of gaming news <laughs> this week. Unfortunately, uh, I don't know if you noticed that it, it being pretty light this week, but. Um, it, it's just one of those things, you know, it's during the summer and also during a pandemic and during a, a time of um, massive social unrest. So um, maybe just stuff isn't going on. Uh, but uh, I thought um, one thing that was pretty neat was that uh, Electronic Arts uh, has returned um, to Steam in full force. So, um, did you did you see this, uh, Lotus? I had heard about it. So finally, I can buy the new SimCity on Steam and not Origin. Well, I mean, there's a lot more than that. I mean, no, um, that's, that's that's the only digital game that EA has ever made. <laughs> I mean, they, they uh, credit where credits due. They they do have a nice library. They um, really do. Yeah. Uh, they they and and a lot of their old stuff is is really cool. But I'll, I'll just give this a um uh just a, a run through. I mean, all the Dragon Age games. I think only one or two of the Dragon Age games was on uh uh was on Steam and um you know from Legacy stuff from when they yeah. they still had a good relationship with Valve. Uh, so now all of them are on there. And uh, Inquisition is apparently excellent. The first one's apparently excellent. So. Um, I never really got too far into the first one uh, when I when I was playing Mass Effect. Uh, I was pl- I was starting to play Dragon Age One when Mass Effect Two came out, and that just it got my attention. So, um, but uh, their big uh, recent title uh, actually uh, was just released on there as well, Command and Conquer Remastered Edition. Mm-hmm. Apparently, uh, people are very happy with it. Um, which is good because there um, there have been uh, some strategy uh, uh, mishaps lately, especially on uh, Activision Blizzard's end. Uh, so uh, with uh, with uh, Warcraft three, I think was, was yeah, the one that, re- that got botched. Yeah, yeah, that was the one that got botched. But yeah, you have all the Crisis games on here, all the Need for Speed games, Unravel, which is a kind of uh, one of their indie styled. Uh, is that titles the one where that's that really good. Red yarn doll. Mm-hmm. And okay. Unravel Two. It's a two-player one. Um, um, pa- Burnout Paradise Remastered. One of the that best game games of all time. It's that game so is so good. I still prefer Revenge, but Paradise is like kind of open world. There's so it's, much it's you can thing. do. Yeah, it, it it it's you can't really compare it to the other ones because it's different. Yeah. It, and and it it's, it's the only thing like it. It's the only thing like it and it, uh, they made it look even better um and it's only 5 bucks now on sale which yeah, the, the burnout games really steal. are like I'm not even a big racing person but the, the burnout stuff is just brilliant. Yeah, um it, if you want to play a, a, a game in the series, this is uh, this is a good place to start because this it, it was the last one, but it was yeah. also really really fun. But uh, Burnout Three is fucking great, and Revenge, which is the fourth one, is fucking great yeah, as well. Yeah, I watched my friend play Revenge in college, and that game is way too good <laughs> with those yeah, vertical I'll... takedowns. All three of those titles, the the last three that they made, yeah. um, were 
f- phenomenal, and they don't replace each other. They're all they're all good in their own special ways. Yeah, um, I'm, not, I'm not so familiar with three, but Revenge and Paradise are like entirely different beasts, except for the fact that you race and sometimes crash cars. Uh, so three has the best crash mode of the entire series, um, which is phenomenal. It's kind of like playing golf. Uh, you just basically watch the. Uh, chain reactions happen like you you set up the car and you launch it and you try to um you can only shunt the car a little bit uh, oh you from knock side into things for money yeah exactly oh, maybe i have seen that then okay yeah uh there is a crash mode in in revenge but it's not as good but i think the campaign's better in okay. uh in revenge and then paradise just like i said it's its own thing it, it's open yeah, world there's a full-on it, campaign in that one yeah yeah, yeah it, it's really cool i mean jedi fallen order which is a recent uh darling yeah um look, people love that game uh i want to play it in fact so i'm glad that it's on steam because i'd much rather buy it on steam than origin origin's a pain in the ass um uh, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning is on here, which is kind of funny because they're they're remaking they're remaking that. Speaking uh, the, of which, I heard I think I think they were calling it like re reckoning, so it's like you're stuttering like re reckoning. <laughs> um, it, all the Dead Space games, which are all great. Uh, two, it might be one of the best horror games of all time. Yeah, and um, three is like seemingly intentional schlock, but the gameplay is fun. way better than I thought it would. I mean, I mean like. The, like, the running around and shooting, I don't, I don't mean that kind of gameplay, I mean, like, the stuff you kind of encounter and interact with, especially multiplayer. I thought the multiplayer idea was, like, the stupidest thing ever, and actually playing it, it is very well executed. Yeah, uh, Jade Empire's on here, which was uh, the title they made after KOTOR. Yeah, that's been a favorite. Um, I, I haven't played that one, but that's a very well-loved title. Yeah. It's, um, it's been on GOG forever, though. Yeah, yeah, that that, that one's been around. Um, I don't think all the mass effects are on here i think only the first one is still on here i don't think two and three are huh. have made the transition well, nope. well, speaking of which what about dead space you said all three dead space titles uh i saw one and two i can't confirm three yeah because i remember three specifically even on ps3 they ask you about your fucking origin account I was like, Ugh. well they still probably make you sign into origin i mean that's that's probably the uh <sighs> Uh, yeah, I mean, like that's that's just a thing. I mean, um, you know, Ubisoft makes you go into UPlay. I mean, they, they uh, Rockstar is particularly annoying um, with their stuff. But at least I didn't um, have to do that with L.A. Noir. Yeah, uh, I remember having to do it on the PS3 version of all things. Um, really? Because that's, that's how I played it. it. I don't remember having to do hoop jumping. Nah, I remember doing it. Huh. Maybe, maybe I just went along with it or whatever. But um, this also, um, I, I see they, they also brought a bunch of their casual titles, which aren't to be ignored either, because they have um, some of the most successful casual titles of all time. They have the Bejeweled series, uh, the, the Zuma's... Great. Zuma's series and the Plants vs. Zombies. I mean, you make make fun of those all you want. They're highly addictive, and everybody plays them. Yeah. Um, so, so they're uh, they also have Peggle on here, uh, the Peggle games, and Peggle Peggle's a lot of fun. Um, oh, do, a lot of these games the, are great. Do you remember that hilarious EA video? I think it was EA. They got memed where the guy was announcing Peggle Two. <laughs> no. It was the funniest shit because like this guy announced it like it was the most hype like you know like elder scrolls 6 <laughs> oh, like it's, it's peggle 2 and he does like a fucking like <laughs> victory fist pump spin jump like like ken shuriuken it was so oh, funny peggle 2 and it does like the reveal and like nobody cares because it's fucking i mean like I, I know i know <laughs> well I, like i know these mobile titles are like extremely popular like plants and zombies is like a hype title but like the people that go to ea aren't looking for peggle it just cracked me up oh I have to correct myself. Mass Effect Two is here. Uh, okay. I don't know about three. Um, probably three is somewhere in there. The Death Spank games, if you remember those. Um, I, I think I've heard the title, but I don't know nothing about these things. Eh, they're kind of like uh, Diablo light with uh, some humor elements. Okay. Um, they're very of their time, though, so they're kind of. Uh, uh, I I wouldn't waste my time with them at the moment. Okay. Um, but 
there, there's plenty of good stuff to be had here. Uh, oh, and I, I'm forgetting The Sims 3, uh, which is a gigantic title. I mean, The that's... Sims 3 is probably... I mean, I have nostalgia for The Sims... Oh shit! Sorry, I would never mind. I was confusing the Sims with SimCity. Never mind. I don't. Oh, know. I, don't okay. I don't know one have, Sims from another. <laughs> they have SimCity Four. Um, yeah, the, the the one just called SimCity. No, it's called SimCity Four. They have oh, the fourth so one. Oh, so SimCity yeah. was the fifth one. I think that might have even been in between uh, three and four. Oh, Four's, I think, that might be the lightest one. Okay. Uh, but it's the most revered one, I think. Yeah, well, so. that's that's where I was going to go. As I remember hearing SimCity three, uh, or or three thousand or whatever, being like extremely highly regarded. I have nostalgia for two thousand, but like the games have evolved since then. <laughs> yeah, Ma- it looks like Mass Effect three isn't on here, which is a huge oversight. But yeah, uh, both the entire both point of are... those is continuity. So let's not bring all three over. <laughs> yeah, um, they might be in the process of doing it. Who the hell knows? But yeah. um. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll, they'll shore everything up, but, um, it, I mean, this is a great start. Uh, both, both Mirror's Edge games are on here, which are, uh, fantastic games. Uh, yeah, I, I, mean, I quite like the first stuff. one. I haven't played the second one yet. Uh, I haven't either. And, uh, but I did buy it to support it, um, when it yeah, did I, come out. Yeah, I have out. it on PS4, yeah. Uh, because that, that was something we were very lucky to get. Uh, so, that, yeah, the Mirror's yeah. Edge was a very like niche title. The people who played it, or uh, I Loved should say, it. cult title. Yeah. Because I mean, I remember it, it getting all this advertising and looking how gorgeous it looks. But like, how many people actually played it? And of those who did, how many cared? So like, the ones who cared care quite a bit. But it's not like a title you would have expected to be allowed to have a sequel. So it's pretty cool that it did. Yeah, uh, I think the 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 general consensus is it's good, but not quite as good as the original. So okay. it's, it's one of okay. those things. But and you know, even, whatever. even the original one is like okay, but I mean, of course, the two of us like games that are weird and interesting and you can't find anywhere else. So like, I'm not looking for a perfect game. I'm looking for something that'll hold my attention, and it did. Yeah, it's up there with like Breakdown as an unusual um, first person title um, that does something different and unusual. So. I don't know um, that one. Oh, uh, Breakdown is special. Um, Break Breakdown is a first-person brawler. Um, oh, I think I think you have told me about this actually. So, is, yeah. uh, I think I remember asking about this. I said like it's kind of like Escape from Butcher Bay. Yeah, but before <laughs> that, um, right. uh, so uh, Breakdown was a game by Namco of all people uh, of of all companies, uh, and it was a OG Xbox exclusive. Um, and I think I believe it's one of the backwards compatible titles, so you could play it on current systems right now. Uh, but it, um, it, like it, it was supposed to be really immersive, so you could like, it, like when you would pick up a health item, it would be like a, you know food or something, yeah. And you would see them like eat the hamburger, like bite yeah, by bite, yeah, kind of like in Breath <laughs> of the Wild, you just go through that food. Yeah, yeah, um, and uh. Almost all the like there were guns in it, but they were stop gaps. So like your your main um, attack was your like magic arms. Sure. Um, and then later on, uh, there was the Xeno Clash games, and those kind of uh, more picked up that kind of feel. But Xeno Clash also has some really weird stuff going on in it. So sure, sure. Um, but there aren't too many games like that. Is the um, is the point. Uh, and Mirror's Edge was all about the traversal and, uh, you know, parkour stuff that was going on. And also the fact that you, the entire game trains you to avoid combat rather than engage in it. Yeah, um, like, you can engage in it, and you can you kill everyone you encounter, but you, yeah, it's like level one of Deus Ex, like, you really just shouldn't. <laughs> well, it... it it's actually harder that way. Um, you, the game rewards you by making it easier if you just run away. You're yeah. supposed to run away. Although what's interesting um, is that you can like knock a gun out of an enemy's hand and use it against them and stuff like that. Yeah, but that's to get them to stop following you if they're right on your tail. You know that kind of thing. So well, the, it's not... the main thing I remember being really interesting was that they really tried pushing how hard it like or pushing the feeling of being first person. Like if you did like a long jump or something and you landed you would tuck and roll and it oh would, yeah it would do like a first person somersault, somersault. which yeah, could yeah. be a little disorienting to some people 
it was a beautiful game for the time though and especially the pc version so um, shiny like uh, that that yeah. red and blue and the chrome look it was very stylized yeah and they also designed it really well um they they made it very apparent uh what you could and couldn't do in any area um well, like, yeah again, color like the, coding the stuff things. You could re- yeah the color coded and yeah. a, a gorgeous uh soundtrack as well Oh yeah, no, it, it was a phenomenal game. I I, I really enjoyed uh, playing it back then. So um, anyway, um, we should move on to um, our next few announcements. So um, we we did talk about uh, uh, Sega apparently having a big announcement uh, to come out. Uh, this isn't it, but I'm going to talk about it first uh, because there were two big Sega announcements. The the first one being. The Game Gear Micro was announced uh, to the surprise of everyone. <laughs> this was like a parody. It's like two micro. It's like the phone in Zoolander. Like, what are you gonna do with it once you have it? <laughs> um, yeah, it's really interesting. It looks like um, uh, M2 might be producing it as well, um, which is kind of funny. Uh, the f- the funny thing is like the the really funny thing is that like even amongst Sega fans like. Most Sega fans don't even like the Game Gear all that much, and um, the, the Game Gear as an idea was brilliant, but the games yeah. were like, eh. Yeah, um, the games tended to be uh, either greatly compromised, number one, or yeah. very uh, extremely difficult. Um, I I had a Game <laughs> those, Gear back those in the day. Sonic the Hedgehog games are fucking impossible. Uh, well, the first one is playable and fun. The second one, which is the most prominent one, so, uh, because it was bundled with a lot of um, Game Gears, yeah, you see the it second game is near impossible. It, it is, f- like, once you beat the first uh, world, um, like, and you move on to the second world, you have to do this hang gliding thing. And yeah. you have to do it successfully, and it is incredibly unintuitive not only um, that but i i forgot if this awful. was the second game or the third one but it was one of the ones where the way the first boss worked was it had like a conveyor belt of objects coming toward it and you had to avoid the things and let the boss kill itself but when i first played it i didn't know that that's what you had to do because in every sonic game every minute yeah. you jump on the boss so i jump on it and just die and i'm like what <laughs> what's the catch do i have yeah, to wait for well, it to like... open up and it, at that moment never came and i was like why how do you fight the first boss the first boss uh you have to like drop uh like a a, a shell on him that was left over from what he like he he was throwing at you or something, something like that something like and, that yeah and, and it, it they kind that of brought is... that back in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. There's like a conveyor belt boss that you just wait out. But that yeah, was but more like, obvious because it's just a bunch of spikes. This is a brand new concept for a Sonic game. And that's not what people want out of Sonic. Yeah. It's like weird And, and again, bosses. it's the first boss. So you're like, oh, yeah. it's the easy one. I jump on it eight times. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Um. Fortunately, the third one was actually a lot better. Uh, Triple Trouble. Yeah. Um, that, 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 that one's a, quite a good game. I gotta but... get into those because, like, Sonic Adventure. I want to say one has a whole bunch of Sonic Game Gear games as unlockables. I don't know if the Dreamcast version does, but the DX does on the GameCube. So well, they're, they're I, just there. I can tell you this. I'm a huge um, Sega fan, and there are maybe a handful of. Uh, Game Gear games that I really like, and most of them have been either um, were either ported to the uh, Master System officially later on, uh, or uh, they were fan trans uh, fan converted to 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 uh, like Sega Master System ROMs later. Or um, or, or option three, don't play were... them at all. No 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 no. no. You're, you're saying the ones you like had this happen or that happen. Yeah. And the third option is uh it's sonic labyrinth <laughs> and you love that one it's sonic, sonic labyrinth um is uh ranks under the sonic popcorn machine <laughs> and the sega pico it's sonic pico games oh god the, the uh, games sonic like labyrinth is the worst sonic product it is even worse than sonic uh sonic shuffle or Shuffle, Shuffle's? sorry. Yeah, Sonic, Shuffle. Jam- no, Sonic Jam is good. Yeah, Sonic Shuffle. No, it's worse than Sonic Shuffle. Uh, I would rather play Sonic Shuffle. And that's saying a lot, because Sonic Shuffle is the really bad Mario Party game. I was just going to say, you know you know Mario Party? You know what made it good? <laughs> what if we just ignored all that? 
So, like, it has all of the bad parts of Mario Party, meaning the board game part. <laughs> and yeah. uh, the uh, mini games are not fun at all. <laughs> and, and on top of that, you can go for, like, four or five turns without even encountering a minigame. Yeah, which is ridiculous. I mean, uh, really, Mario Party should just be a minigame collection rather than the board game part. There but, is you know, one on 3DS. Yeah, it should just be a minigame collection. Um, but at the same time, though, I, I like the Mario Party games... Like I like the idea that the board game builds up to the like to the mini game. Like you're gonna yeah. get one, and the randomness. Although I also appreciate when you're done with the board game, like you can just play by choice whatever you've unlocked because you shouldn't be completely beholden to randomness. But I don't mind the board game aspect. But I, yeah, I do appreciate the idea of just being able to play any of the mini games of any of the series whenever you want, except for the ones that damage your hand so bad you could get a collector's item glove <laughs> to wear to play those minigames yeah but um i mean what what i was gonna say is the the game gear's best games um like that were exclusive are like few and far in between and yeah. and the ones that were good were um were decent ports at the time that, usually that have like streets of rage 2 or like uh, i wouldn't even say that the streets of rage games were all that great in fact they were really difficult a lot harder than their genesis com- really? uh, counterparts oh yeah they were extremely difficult ex- especially the first game um streets of rage 1 was really 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 difficult you'd be very i'd be very surprised if many people beat that game huh. um because i certainly didn't and i could beat the regular game just fine when i was a kid well, streets of rage um, 1 and 2 are jokes like even as a kid you, you yeah. just you just kind of go <laughs> it's only streets of rage 3 that's pure bullshit and that's because it had its difficulty upped in the west yeah um i, I was gonna say like Fan- uh, fantasy zone was a was a very good port uh on the on the on the on the game gear and that's basically because the master system version was great um uh, there are other like art, uh, you know, arcade ports at the time that are pretty damn decent. I mean, there's a Chase HQ one that was really good, but I mean, by and large, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna go over actually the uh, the games that were announced for uh, the the Game Gear Micro because this will shed light on some of the best games. So um, uh, there are uh, they are. Uh, they are releasing four different Game Gear Micros with four games apiece. Yeah. Um, so, uh, these, keep in mind, this is the Japanese lineup. I don't think they announced it for North America and Europe yet, but, uh, there are 16 games total, you know, as that would make sense four times four. The black one, uh, comes with Sonic the Hedgehog, good game. Puyo Puyo 2, also good game. Outrun, uh, decent version of that. And Royal Stone, I have no idea what that is. Um... The yellow one is Shining Force Gaiden Ensai, uh, Shining Force, the Sword of Haja, Shining Force Gaiden. Uh, so all three of the Shining Force games for that system, they're all good, but I doubt if all th- all three of those are coming to the West because I think only one of them ended up coming out in English on the Game Gear. Uh, th- they later got uh, a massive upgrade to the Sega CD. Um so oh that's what those it, were like shining force cd yeah shining force cd is actually a compilation of the game year games oh i didn't um, know that yeah so uh you don't need this version <laughs> even if it does come out in english uh just play the, the sega cd version it's which well is if excellent. you could fucking have a sega cd and get a it because it's fucking expensive yeah and then nazo Puyo, um which i think is the Puyo pop like um, it's the Puyo, um, like, labyrinth kind of game, like, dungeon crawling game. I think that's what that is, uh, because, yeah, Nazo means, uh, maze, I think. So, uh, Nazo Puyo, I think that's what that is. Um, the red one comes with, uh, this one's interesting. So, this is, <laughs> this is the, uh, Atlas one, apparently. Um, Revelations, the Demon Slayer, and uh, Megami Tensei Gaiden Last Bible Spat, uh, Special, which are both uh, Shin Megami Tensei uh, games. Um, I don't think either of them came out in English, uh, so I doubt either of those will come. Uh, the GG Shinobi, which is one of the best games on the system. I would, I would actually recommend... Um, seeking out shinobi 1 and shinobi 2 on the game gear they are unique games 
uh, that are both really good. Uh, I actually really enjoy them, and they don't exist on any other system. So uh, they're very good. Uh, they don't they don't correlate with the Master System arcade or Genesis games. So uh, they're they're like their own thing. Uh, and Columns, which is you know, Columns is a decent. Oh, it always has been a decent game, but Puyo Puyo is way better. Um, Sonic Chaos, uh, which is um, uh, an okay Sonic game. Uh, that's that's. I'm sorry, this is on the blue one. Gunstar Heroes, which is actually pretty interesting if you are a Gunstar Heroes fan, uh, because it has a unique uh, version of uh, Green's level. Uh, but everything else is just kind of a port down. So, well, you know, it's only a curiosity. Sylvan Tail, which is kind of a Zelda clone. And Baku Baku Animal, which is actually a pretty fun uh, puzzle game. So you actually have some of the best games here for, for the system, notably missing, uh, you know, Sonic Triple Trouble, um, the unique uh, Mickey Mouse games for obvious reasons, uh, unique uh, Donald Duck games for obvious reasons. Um but uh, yeah, the was the, the land of illusion is excellent, uh, and there's also uh, like the lucky dime ta- um, caper for for Donald Duck, which is really good. Wait, wait, um, wait a minute. There was a land of illusion on the Game Gear. Yeah, so um, it wait, is a unique title. But so, so Sega does the same thing that Nintendo does, where World <laughs> of Illusion is on home yep. console and Land is on the the handheld. I- well, the first one was Castle of Illusion, so... But, yes, That's you are That's freaking correct. wild. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sega's... Um, when Sega made them, uh, not just published them, uh, when Sega made them, the, their Disney games were top-notch. They were really, oh, really yeah. good. So you, you have um, Castle of Illusion, which is called I Love Mickey Mouse in, <laughs> in Japan. Uh, and then uh, World of Illusion, which is the two-player sequel uh, where you could play as Donald and Mickey. And then uh, Land of Illusion was like the Game Gear Sega Master System unique title. Uh, that was really good. And uh, there's also Quackshot, which is um, Donald Duck's. Um, hey, Quackshot's pretty brilliant. Is a lot of fun. Yeah. The only big the, the, there's one major flaw with uh, with Quackshot. It has no saving or uh, or password yeah. function, and it is a long game. It's not it's not a short game. So. Um, it, it could take you uh, like three three hours to play, you know that kind of thing. So um, that that's pretty long for a title, um, you know, without a save function. So uh, yeah, I mean, uh, some really good games here. Um, but to be honest, to be very honest, they're they're these are mainly co- collector's items. Uh, they have f- f- uh, all the buttons are f- are uh, functional, which is pretty cool they're really tiny so it's kind of fun to have them full color screen uh probably the screen will look way better than the uh game gear ever itself ever did um yeah it's just one of those things um i don't even think they have video out um so i wouldn't expect them to yeah but they 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 are uh listen to this you can purchase i i think this is a separate purchase but you can get uh, like the magnifier <laughs> to put on the front of it. Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> um, no, it looks like it might have an HDMI uh, out, actually. Oh, curious. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, like I said, uh, I'm sure it's it's a fun little collector's item. Uh, they are forty uh, fifty dollars a pop. So um, if you want to get all of these, it's two hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Plus Japanese shipping. Yeah, I mean, you could probably get away with uh, doing um, Japanese Amazon um, and getting free shipping on that if you're a Prime member, but eh, it's just... Eh. <laughs> I, cool, but uh, even for me, I'm like, and I'm a, I'm a Sega nut. <laughs> it's not for me. Um, so moving on from that... Uh, Sega said that their big announcement, which um, may kind of fall on deaf ears, unfortunately, it's a little disappointing maybe to um, uh, Western um, uh, Western um, fans of theirs, but they said that their big announcement was that they are releasing a new arcade platform, 
which will mainly be in Japan. Uh, maybe at some round one locations and, and Dave and Buster's here in, in the United States, maybe if we're lucky. Um, but um, apparently what they're doing is they're, they are uh, releasing what's what they're calling a, a fog computing, a fog gaming uh, setup, which is kind of a cross between like, um, th- uh, like it, it's basically like a cloud uh, based arcade service where uh, you should be able to play like a lot of different games and uh, if they have like a lot of machines they can link together for um, like processing power and that kind of thing uh, and it's supposed to have like cloud computing capabilities so I, I think it's 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 their way of trying to modernize the, the arcade platform I mean in back in the olden days you had to buy like a whole new arcade machine almost yeah, for every game every game you know including the whole big cabinet and and you know monitor and everything and joystick controls and all that you know if you were lucky there there were upgrade um there were upgrade kits for certain games you know to upgrade them to their sequel or a similar game you know if they used the same hardware but that was few and far in between and then later on you had like um cartridge based uh, arcade systems like you know the the neo geo um but um, you know, as time went on, you know, there the, these are all very expensive for arcade owners because every time they buy a game, they they, they have to pay premium tit- um, you know, amount amounts to get these titles working on their on their systems. They have to pay, you know, thousands of dollars usually, uh, you know, to buy every new game. Um, maybe this is a way for them to um, you know, maybe pay a service fee uh, and um and get new games that way, which would be, would be really good probably for the operators, I would think, uh, in the long run. You know, um, especially uh, if they don't have to buy a, uh, you know, let's say a certain game was unsuccessful. Um, uh, they wouldn't be taking the loss on that. Um, they yeah. would, you know, just be continuing to pay their their licensing fee, which, you know, that that's actually pretty brilliant. Um, it's kind of like, you know, um, you know, paying for a Netflix subscription, you know, if, if a show is disappointing, uh, you know, it's no big deal. You have all the yeah, other stuff. Else. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So uh, I think, I think that's the right way to go in fact. And I, I think it's pretty exciting in the long run, but of course we, we have no idea what's going to be on it. Um, we don't know whether they're going to put legacy titles, even, you know, like old, old games, you know, let's play some, uh, uh, revenge of death adder on there or you know, whatever. Oh, good luck with that. Yeah. yeah. But you know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, who knows? But it's still really cool. Um, moving on, uh, Namco announced a um, new new collection, uh, which was actually extremely interesting. So M2 is putting this together. We've talked about M2 many, many times. They've done the Sega Ages collections and have done the uh, the uh, Genesis Mini, Turbo Graphics Mini, and a whole bunch of other fantastic ports. Uh, they are putting together a um, collection for Namco, and uh, Namco museum collections are always a lot of fun. Um, they usually have a lot of uh, crossover titles, but they every successive one tends to throw in something really obscure. Uh, so it gives you like a reason to play it. Plus, you get more accessibility to you know games you love like Pac-Man and things like that. So um, apparently what they're doing with this one is uh, they are putting in a whole bunch of um, Famicom versions of their games in case those were the ones you grew up with. Um, And uh, what you do is you could either buy them in waves, um, like, you know, like a season pass, or you could buy them one at a time. So like if you just want one one of them, if you just want Pac-Man, go for it. Uh, which is cool. I mean, that's what they did with Capcom Arcade Cabinet, and of course I bought them all, because that that's my jam, but um, this is still really cool. So, um, on this collection, and this is the Japanese version, uh, keep in mind, they have Pac-Man, which, you know, is a good version on the on the Famicom, Galaga, good version, it plays just like the arcade, really. Uh, Tower of Juraga, you know, a good, good version of that. Um, Battle City, uh, these are all good. Star Luster, Family Jockey, which uh, nobody's going to remember that. That's like a horse racing game. Uh, uh, Yukai uh, Duchuki. I don't know that one. Uh, Dragon Spirit, which is a good sh- shmup. Actually, the Famicom version of that is quite good. I think it's unique, too. Um, they added 
stuff to it. Um, Quinty, which is really interesting. Do you know about um, Quinty or Mendel Palace as it's known in the U.S.? I've never heard of it. So this was uh, one of the first games made by Game Freak before they became oh, wow. uh, before they became the Pokemon people. Uh, you you probably recognize it if um, you saw it. It, it kind of has an overhead perspective like Bomberman, but you have your character is on a bunch of decks of tiles, and you flip the tiles and uh, smash your opponents into the into the walls. Um, by flicking the tiles and um, the tiles are like set up like a deck of cards so you may uncover uh, like tiles that have like power-ups and stuff on them uh, as you flip them it's really interesting and it's a lot of fun and the music is amazing um, I don't know if you've ever seen it or not but it, it's I don't really think cool. so yeah it's a it's a fun game and uh, another interesting one, Splatterhouse Wampaku Graffiti, uh, which is a <laughs> nice. unique Splatterhouse game that was for the Famicom, which is really good. Um, it's one of the best Splatterhouse games, actually. With multiple endings. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a unique one. game. Yeah, oh, well, I think I think it will, all of it was a joke one. <laughs> um, yeah, but there was still, like, a real ending to the joke game, but there's, there's also an ending that just goes totally off the rails. <laughs> oh, what was that? Re- remind me. I actually forgot. I just know you can end the game early if you do something weird. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be a, a stage play, I think. Uh, so, like, at the end of the game, you you kind of, like, you know, take off your mask and, you know, enjoy refreshments in the back or something. Maybe. <laughs> it's, I, it's like I, I just know there's more than one ending. I just forgot what they were. It's been a while since I've seen it. So, here is the interesting part of that, this. Uh, they are including a brand new demake um like a famicom version of pac-man pac-man championship edition which is uh really cool so pac-man championship edition was a uh, xbox live arcade game and it was a lot of fun it was the last pac-man game that the pac-man creator made uh and it is a really fun game it's basically like um you know play the game until you die kind of thing or, or, or score as many points in a, in a certain amount of time kind of game really fun and they made a, a game that could run on the NES it, that's it, pretty it, rad it, yeah it's really fun with the same you know rules and everything like that wait is, is this collection by the way being um, localized in the west so I was going to say that uh, apparently there is already uh, they haven't officially announced this but it, uh, it appeared on Microsoft's um, Microsoft Store uh, okay. with volumes one and two with a different selection of games. Oh, that that okay. That's kind of where I was going because I was going to say the more interesting thing to me would be Juan Paco Graffiti just because that would be an official localization of it at long last. Yeah, so um, the volume one, uh, which is going to be, you know, this is going to be on Xbox uh, as of right now. I'm sure we'll come to Switch as well. Uh, but uh, the first one is Galaxian Pack, um, which is the first Galaga um, game. Uh, it's it's the lesser known first game in that series. Pac-Man Zevius, uh, which wasn't on there. Mappy, Dig Dug, pa- Tower of Draga, Sky Kid, Dragon Buster, Dragon Spirit. Yeah, wow, th- this is a, actually a better selection. Uh, Splatterhouse One Paku Graffiti and uh, oh, no Pac-Man shit. Championship Edition. So yeah, I actually find, um, I mean I know the D make is interesting because it's actually new, but I'm more interested in One Paku Graffiti because it'll be yeah. like an official like. 30 years later <laughs> localization and this is done by m2 so you could bet that they will actually do the um translation they've always done that when they've brought a title over and then they're also doing a volume two um and these aren't a la carte like the um japanese version so this includes another 11 titles uh galaga which you know fantastic one of the best games of all time battle city Pacland, uh which is Considered to be, by a lot of people, to be one of the fir- very first uh, scrolling platformers. Um, it came out right before Super Mario World, or Super Mario Brothers, I'm sorry. So um, a lot of times people bring that up in that conversation. Uh, Dig Dug 2, which is one of your favorites. Um, yeah, like, I, I believe it or not, I never really got into Dig Dug 1. But Dig Dug 2, I just kind of found addictive. 
Yeah, uh, Super Xevious, which doesn't get a f very many ports, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, Mappy Land, Legacy of the Wizard. Wow, that's a that's that's a Falcom game. <laughs> wow, uh, Rolling Thunder, uh, which is the interesting uh you know the famicom version of that dragon buster 2 which i didn't even know existed uh mendel Pla palace and this is a brand new game they made a second d make i wanted to bring this up mm -hmm. they are doing gap plus uh which is uh also known as galaga 3 huh. um which is a misnomer it should be called gap plus uh because it goes galaxian galaga Gap Plus. So it shouldn't be called Gal Galaga 3. It should be called Galaxian 3. Yeah, it should be called Galaga 2. <laughs> it, it's exactly. like it's like Dark Forces and Jedi Knight. Like the, the sequel to Dark Forces is Jedi Knight, Dark Forces 2, and then the Dark Forces series is over, and then it's Jedi Knight, Jedi Outcast, and it's like, what when you first see this? <laughs> yeah, but they, they, they called it, for some reason, Galaxian 3. Um, may, maybe like, you know, somebody in the in the office that like, uh, battle Midway was like, you know, we, we should be calling this Galaxian three, and somebody just slapped him. <laughs> well, it's like it's like that meme of the people in the conference room. What should we call it? Like Gap Plus, Galaga three, Galaxian three. The guy gets thrown out the window. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it should either be Galaga two or Galaxian three, and instead it's Galaga three. <laughs> <sighs> uh, it's just wrong, but uh, that that's why they're calling it Gap Plus, um, which is what it always was meant to be called. Um, but that has never gotten a Famicom port, ever. Uh, so this is a brand new port of the game. Uh, so it, you you are getting two D makes if you buy both volumes of this. Wait, Ga um, Galaga's the second game, right? So yes. Galaga 3 would be silly. You know what they should do? They should D make Zvi 2 and call it Zvi 2 3. <laughs> Perfection. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> Shouldn't it be called Zvi 3? I know what I said. <laughs> It's it's like Panzer Dragoon Saga or Panzer Dragoon Two Zvi. <laughs> like, yeah, like uh, what, what are you doing? <laughs> but um, I am always really excited when a collection, especially like a uh, by a reputable company, comes out. I will be buying these because the Western versions are way better than the Japanese versions. Um, it seems, and th this is a really good selection of games. Um. Most of Namco's uh, games on the Famicom were really good ports um, of their their arcade titles. Um, there were, you know, reduction in in graphical fidelity just a little bit, but they all played like them, which is the important part. Um, they it, it wasn't like on Atari, you know, where where you know Pac Man didn't play anything and look any and sound anything like the um, original. You know, like Pac Man uh, on the Famicom was was a, a good version of pap command um uh rolling thunder lost some graphic fidelity but it was a lot of fun um that was the did... arcade game where you go into the doors like you hide yeah. in the door yeah but yeah that game was i don't i don't i don't think i played the nes version but the arcade version is just so brutally hard <laughs> It, it is, but it, it, it's also a lot of fun. Um, it ha also has a fantastic, you know, um, soundtrack and just looks neat. Yeah, it's very it's a, well it's animated. A, yeah. It's a cool looking game. Um, so, but um, you know, there's some there's some good obscurities in here too. I mean, like Super Xevious is a really good one. Uh, Legacy of the Wizard has its fans. It's an early Metroidvania. Uh, Mendel Palace is a fucking like I, I would say that it, it, it's one of the uh, like uh, undiscovered favorites on here. Um, like people, people are gonna play this and be like, "Oh man, this game is actually really good," and I've never heard of it. Hmm. Um, it's 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 a game that nobody talks about, and it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Um, so um, yeah, and and a couple D makes that never existed before that probably hackers will will extract and put right back onto the NES, which would be a lot of fun. Uh, but I, I'm I'm excited. I'll, I'll probably, um, especially if these come out on the Switch, uh, I will I will definitely play these. Um, and there, these are a few titles that are definitely missing from the uh, like the NES app on the uh, on the on the Switch. So this would be you know make your collection feel m even more complete. I would say that like. <laughs> I can't think of too many NES games if if you're counting like all the collections that um, should be on there that aren't 
um, like licensed nightmares, um, you know, it, that are that should be on the Switch that aren't. Um, you know, it's just one of, uh, they they've they've done a good job at um, you know put all these companies have put out collections. You know, like uh, Konami's put out a couple collections by now. Uh, has mm-hmm. uh, has all, all the Contra games uh, except for Contra Force. Of yeah, and that that one uh, Castlevania collection as well. Uh, yeah, the Castlevania collection. Um, you have all the Mega Man games. Uh, on on the switch uh you have all of all of the kunio kun games like every yeah, like almost crazy. every single yeah. one every, all, 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 and there are a ton of them <laughs> and almost every single one uh was, what was it? super spike vivo was like one of the only ones i didn't put on there uh which isn't really even a kunio kun game but uh, i would have enjoyed it but um i can't think of what, what was missing from that collection i don't know there there was only like oh, one geez, game i don't follow kunio kun i don't freaking know yeah, but well, we, we talked about it, but yeah. still, still cool stuff here. Um, moving on from that, uh, just a kind of a sobering thing, but I did want to give this um, some uh, press here because um, uh, obviously, with everything going on, uh, with all the protesting going on, um, you know, uh, I I personally am uh, you know a, a supporter of Black Lives Matter and all. Uh, and and the protests going on. I'm I'm not in particularly um, happy with the looting. Uh, I don't, I'm not a big fan of that um, at, at all. I, I but uh, I I am in in favor of the protests themselves. So um, this uh, in going with this, there are a lot of companies that are doing really good things. I mean, at at, at bare minimum, some of them have just come out and said that. Uh, you know, uh, they support Black Lives Matter, uh, which is a good thing for them to say, uh, obviously. Even Nintendo, uh, of all companies, which never, almost never makes a politi- uh, an overt political statement, I should say. Um, they they actually came out and said, uh, um, you know, big companies like Sega, uh, you know, uh, other big gaming companies of all, all pretty much said it. But um, there are, are even other companies that are doing the, um, you know, the leg work and actually you know donating uh towards these um causes and one of them is itch.io which is a scrappy platform that kind of has a lot of indie uh titles on it and uh we've we've talked about them uh, before with the world of horror i don't know if yeah. you remember uh us talking about that game that's kind of like uh junji ito oh, inspired yeah um and also uh ray barnholtz um uh, game uh, blast rush is on there as well but they're hosting this um uh bundle for racial justice and equality uh which has uh 740 indie titles on it 742 and, uh 742 now okay they they must have included uh over it said over 740 in, in the in the yeah the no th- this yeah. shit is fucking wild yeah the idea is that they're giving shout outs to um like black creators so mm-hmm. they have 742 games for sale like as a collection it says from 564 uh creators and normally this would be it says $3,473 because it's fucking 742 games so it's $3,473 under normal circumstances but they are doing 99% off. You can you can donate as much money as you want for this, but you can get all these games for $5. Yeah, like that's, the minimum. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, $5, and a lot of people have donated far more than that. It's just the average yep. contribution is eleven sixty. so usually a lot of people are throwing in like 10 bucks. The top contribution was 5000 Someone went way over the top. But, like, they're, they're trying to raise $5 million. At the time of... This podcast's recording, they're at 2.1, almost 2.2 million. That's they're amazing. cruising right along. So, yeah, this is this is a great way to get the word out and also allow people to know about all these games that were made by these black creators. Yeah, and I, I should also say uh, where the funds are going. Uh, so all yes. proceeds, proceeds from the bundle for racial justice and equality will be donated to the NAACP Legal Defense uh, and Education Fund, uh, the Community Bail Fund, which is greatly needed, mm-hmm. um, especially with a lot of the junk going on right now with people people just like being snatched off the street, um, mm-hmm. just like really crazy stuff um, uh, with, uh, with funds split equally. 
Um, yeah, this so, is 50 yeah. Uh, the, uh, the LDF uh, fights for racial justice through litigation, advocacy, and public education. The Community Bail Fund is a col uh, collective fund that organizes donations for over 70 bail funds, mutual aid funds, and activist organizations. Um, so this, this was from Silicon Era, from an article here. Uh, I think it's a wonderful cause, and especially, um, you know, in, in a time where, um, you know, this, this kind of thing is greatly needed, um, you know, for this cause. Uh, at the very least, if you just want to be selfish and, and do the five bucks, I mean, like, why not? You're, you're, you're getting all yeah, of these that's, games. That's and, what they want from you anyway. And yeah, I mean, it, like you're it, never going to find a better deal on anything than this. Even if you don't agree with the po uh, politics of it, um, which I, I, I wish you would, uh, but, um. Even yeah, look if, at all these games. Yeah, exactly. You, it, it's hard to ignore the, the the deal here, and also like there's a lot of scrappy, re really cool little indie games on here. Uh, Not only that, but some platform. of them I, I recognized. Minute, I think. Li lim oh, yeah. Limited Run Games actually gave that the treatment. Uh, well, a lot of a lot of games started off in beta on on itch.io and okay, then okay. later became like bigger games. But you get like the full versions of those games. So, um, uh. Okay, uh, we'll read some of the titles that are actually like, um, uh, n you know, recognizable. Night in the Woods, uh, Cook Serve Delicious Two. Um, uh, let me see here. Yeah, um, I didn't realize Night in the Woods was uh, an Inchio game at first. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, Lancer, a sci-fi mech-based tabletop RPG. Um, you know, just like really cool, and um, they don't. They also are like DRM-free. Um, yeah. it, itch.io is its own platform, so you won't be getting external keys like, uh, with, um, you know, Humble Bundle or something like that. Yeah, uh, no, they specified, yeah, these will be direct download from the itch.io site. Yeah, itch.io is really cool. I mean, uh, a, a lot of the games, like, if, if, if you haven't poked around on there, uh, a lot of the games are, um, you know, by, like, one or two people dev teams. A lot of them are really interesting, a lot of fun. Um, there, there's like a really cool com scrappy community on there and, uh, they, uh, a lot of them are like, kind of like pay what you want. There's like usually a minimum, like yeah, you could buy yeah. a game for a dollar, but you can throw the guy five bucks if you want to, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's just a really cool thing. I mean, and a lot of times, a lot of the people who, who end up buying these games, like, uh, oh, you know what? I, I, I think I gave too little and they'll give more, you know, later on. Yeah. It, it's, it's one of those things. So really cool, um, website to get involved in. And again, uh, a good cause and again, uh, a, a heck of a deal. So, uh, definitely check it out because it's, it's, it's cool stuff. Uh, and Ray Barnholt's game, I think is included in there too, as well. So uh, I'm not sure about uh, world of, uh, horror, but still really good stuff. Um, moving on from that, um, uh, Clubhouse Games uh, was recently re released on Switch. Uh, do you know anything about Clubhouse Games? Nah, I mean, I've heard the name, but with a name like that, it sounds like I could have seen it or maybe I couldn't have. It's one of those titles that just sounds like I could theoretically know what that is, but I don't think so. Okay, so as, as, essentially this has the potential to be like kind of boring if they don't do it right. Um, but it, it, it's essentially like all of the games that you would find in your closet uh, when you were a kid. Um, like a bunch but, of board you know, games? Exactly. Um, okay. So you'll, you'll get like dominoes, backgammon, uh, chess, things like oh, that. Oh, fair enough. It's been a uh, while since we've had those released on console. <laughs> exactly. And they, they did a version of this, I think, for the original DS, if I remember right. But they, they have stuff like Connect 4. Sure. Um, uh, you know, Chinese checkers, but there are 51 things you can do in this. Um, I think I had heard about this. Okay. And, and the presentation is wild. It looks great. It looks like you're playing it in, uh, like a really cool family room setting. Um, uh, like the, um, poker, uh, and, and other card games are, are done on like a card table. Uh, there is slot car racing, like done on <laughs> clear, clearly on somebody's like, um, kitchen table somewhere. Uh, it, it looks like it's a whole bunch of fun and there's other kinds of stuff too. And there, a lot of the games are designed to be played like, um, you know, on the go, uh, you know, in the, in the, you know, switch mode. So you can actually play like across from each other, like on a table with the, the switch in front of you. 
which is a lot of fun. You could play Go like that. Um, but there, there's a lot of games, and everybody's really into it. And uh, a bunch of them have like online online modes, which is pretty cool. They're also doing a free pocket edition as well with uh, with a, a limited selection of games. Um, but uh, a lot of people are really raving about it. I mean, it's it's a f- like a fully fledged board game simulator essentially. Um, so it, there's even other parlor games in there. I think there's pool, um, you know, billiards. Um, I think people are like learning how to play dominoes through it because like a lot of people just don't know how to play dominoes. Um, you know, backgammon's all, all, another one of those titles that's like I don't I don't know how to play backgammon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but like uh, apparently the people that love backgammon love it. <laughs> so it, it's one of those things. But you, it's always good to have this kind of thing on the go because you know uh, you. You can't, it's messy. <laughs> I remember having like travel versions of of certain games like Trouble and and uh, like remember that that Gator uh, Dentist game. Crocodile Dentist. <laughs> oh, Crocodile Dentist. That game oh was man, fucking terrifying. <laughs> there was there was a uh, travel version of that that me yep. um, that I grew up with. Yeah, um, I think you like push the teeth in instead of yeah. like pull them out with like a little pair of pliers. Yeah, did you ever see that like uh, that Japanese comedian uh, <laughs> on YouTube? Uh, like he uh, he put thumbtacks. Yeah, I heard about <laughs> in that. The yeah. of, in the That's top, in the top. At that at that point, it's straight up Russian roulette. I mean, I know oh, the definitely. real game is Russian roulette, but it's not gonna like cause you bodily harm. Don't wake daddy. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> but, did I get it right? Yeah, don't wake daddy. That's it. Yeah. yeah, don't wake daddy. I wish I had uh, Loop and Louie. Uh, that was that was that was one of my favorites. But you know, um, but yeah, it, it's fully fledged. Um, you know, the, it has Connect Four, but not Connect Four. You know what I mean? Like it, it's it's Connect Four. Yeah, um, yeah it's called something else. Yeah, Bring exactly. the four of them together. <laughs> it, it's literally called Four in a Row. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, like that's really cool. Um, some other Switch releases. Uh, Outer Worlds finally came out on Switch and apparently is terrible. <laughs> um, it runs really badly, even even amongst other uh, compromised uh, Switch versions, which almost all the really big ones that have been complained about have had major updates and have improved. Um, like but, that, that does seem weird because I was gonna say, well, of course it runs poorly. It's on the Switch, but like they got fucking Doom twenty sixteen to run right. Uh, they got Witcher three to run really well on it. Uh, yeah, like I mean, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> uh, Witcher three is a gigantic ass game. Um, they 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 even um Skyrim runs pretty good on it. I mean, like they're well, I mean, I would hope so. That game's from well, twenty eleven. Yeah, but like Bethesda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, you got me. But that's but, um, but that's not but that's not like oh it's a switch like that's just Bethesda doesn't know how to make a fucking game well, that works. Like I, I I complained about the sexy brutal uh, had like a yeah that uh, had no excuse I don't know uh, what was up with that 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 got a uh, a major update and it, it fixed all the issues yeah um uh bloodstained um got a made uh, a, a few major updates yeah that and was now rough at launch but now it's great yeah yeah yeah. But uh, it's it's a shame because a a title like Outer Worlds is perfect on the go because it has so much content, um, and like it, it's a fun RPG. Um, it's a, it's a shame that um, you know because Skyrim works on it. It's kind of similar to Skyrim. It's a, it's it's not Fallout in space, you know. So, um, but uh, it's a shame that, it, you know, maybe it'll get major updates or whatever, but, um, just stick with the PC, uh, or console versions on this one, except, except for the Switch version. Yeah, I was gonna say other console. Yeah, other console versions, uh, because Outer Worlds is a great game. I actually really, in- uh, have enjoyed my time with it. Um, Arcade Archives, uh, released a new title for the Switch. It, it, it's been on the PS4 for a long time, but, uh, Crazy Climber 2, uh, which is a really fun game. I, I I've shown you Crazy Climber, right? I don't think you've shown it to me, but I know what it is. Um, he, it's that that one level in, oh come on, a uh, lollipop chainsaw, or that yeah. one level in Bart's Nightmare. Yeah, es- essentially you have two joysticks, um, you know, for one one player, and you move them up and down uh, in order to get your character to climb 
up a, a uh, skyscraper. This is the second one. It has much better graphics than the original game. Uh, Do we ever the get the backstory of the, the crazy climber this time? <laughs> I don't know, but like uh, a lot. I want to see what his arc is compared to the first game. <laughs> a lot wackier things happen in the second game uh, because it's a much newer title. Like it happened, it was released much later than 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 the first game. So like it has some really fun wacky Japanese wackiness to it. Uh, so I, I definitely recommend it. it. It's a lot of fun if you like that kind of uh, arcade experience. Um, and also a new title from Konami of all <laughs> of all developers or of all publishers called Skeletac, Attack, which is actually getting some uh, traction. Some people are really loving it. Um, it kind of looks like a Metroidvania with some um, intense platforming in it. Uh, kind of almost has a dark souls and ghouls and ghosts kind of vibe to it it doesn't have the punish as much of a punishment uh for getting hit as ghouls and ghosts or ghost goblins but it, it just kind of feels like it it's, it looks like you have to be very careful with uh, attacking in in the game but it, it looks like it's a lot of fun um moving on from that uh Oh, I, I, I kind of just wanted to bring this up because I've been into Mr. Um, so, so much uh, lately. This is the FPGA uh, platform uh, that is kind of rocking the classic gaming world right now. Um, really accurate uh, simulations of uh, awesome consoles, and uh, all of the cores are, are um, uh, open source. So, like, um, you know, improvements can be made in X and newer uh, capabilities and features can be added over time. Uh, this came out of nowhere, but uh, somebody's working on a Nintendo DS core and already has like graphics showing up, which is yeah. I'm still really curious neat. as to how that's going to work with the dual screen thing, but that's interesting. So, um, <clears throat> uh, going going in line with all, uh, other FPGA projects and the fact that this is kind of an open source thing, uh, you will have uh, a lot of different options. And um, Mr. Uh, is also compatible with a, a mouse, so uh, you should be able to play with a mouse. So uh, mm. that's how it, that would work. <clears throat> so uh, it looks really good so far. They had, they had some uh, couple screen captures that look really nice. Of course, it's probably a, a long uh, time coming. Um, you know, there's, there's probably a lot of work that needs to be done, uh, but it's still really neat that up to... Um, you know, this far into the lineage can be um, worked on this platform, which is really neat. I mean, um, I think what, what's the newest console that is on uh, Mr. Right now is probably the Sega CD. Um, that That's probably the furthest they've gotten. They, they have the PC Engine CD, but that was before the Sega CD. So um, they they they're getting there. I mean, they they somebody's working on a, a PlayStation one. Uh, core and uh, I don't know about N64 or even if that's possible, but uh, it's really cool stuff. Uh, GBA is, has been on there already. Game Boy Advance, um, really cool stuff. I mean, uh, if if you don't mind not um, having the ability to play your actual cartridges, like this is the best way to play all of these old systems. It's it's really good. Uh, it takes some um, know-how and a little bit of uh, a learning curve, but I mean, probably the best thing about Mister is the um, uh, like all of the old uh, personal computer uh, platforms like MSX and stuff like that are on there, um, and also uh, arcade, uh, you know, ar arcade machines that have uh, have cores out there, which are amazing. They have like all the CF CPS one games. Um, uh, you know, all the all the Capcom games for CPS one are are, are are perfect and play exactly like arcade, like better than any of the ports that have ever been released, which is amazing. You know, even better than the Saturn versions of these games. So, uh, really, really, really cool stuff. Um, so, I just wanted to throw that out there um, and and just keep uh, you up to date with the major things that are going on. It even has Sega Pico. <laughs> Oh, thank God. <laughs> uh, and Flappy Bird. Flappy Bird's on there. But uh, I'm not even joking. Uh, <laughs> but uh, moving from that, um, 
uh, this was just kind of a teaser that was put out, but uh, by Sony. But um, uh, Enter the Spider Verse or Into the Spider Verse, I should say, uh, has a sequel announced for 2022. Uh, that's qu- quite a ways off, but you can understand why, uh, because you know, it, you know everything that's going on that, that's probably causing delays with things. But um, and Into the Spider Verse was a fantastic movie. Did you get a chance to see it? Yeah, I finally did. Uh... It's, it's it's a fantastic movie. <laughs> well, a lot of people are saying that it's the best Spider-Man movie. Um, and... uh, yeah, it's up there. That or like Sam Raimi Spider-Man Two. I mean, I haven't seen the Tom Holland one, so no comment. The on Tom Spider-Man Holland ones that. are great too. Um, so it it that's saying a lot. Like, uh, um, the first one, Homecoming, is probably my favorite of the two. But that's what the, I heard. Yeah. Um, but the the Mysterio one is, has has a, has a lot of fun stuff to it so um and i think that's the it's still currently the last marvel movie um i don't think anything has gotten there um as as released after that right i think that's as far the, as i know but i'm not following the mcu closely yeah i think that was the last marvel movie and uh it, the the <laughs> the the twist at the end the was like phenomenal um did, oh, did that, you that hear is, about that? I, I do. I do know about that. Yes, that's yeah. very nice. It, it it was incredible. Um, also, kind of a return to form to what Spider-Man always used to be, um, which is actually pretty cool in the comics. Rather, um, Spider-Man has always kind of been hated by like mainstream population. Uh, so even though he's like the goodest good guy. <laughs> <laughs> is it because he had like coke bottle glasses and those giant sweater vests even though he was only like 15 more like because he's been slandered in the media <laughs> no i'm talking about peter parker <laughs> no mo- mostly because of he's been slandered in the media yep. <laughs> uh, but uh yeah um really cool stuff i i i'm really looking forward to uh, uh, you know a, a new spider-verse movie because um this is a great era for Spider-Man. In fact, um, like everything about Spider-Man is good. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what's going on in the comics right now, so I shouldn't quite say that. But um, uh, this this is really cool, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. Uh, Lotus, do you have anything else that you want to talk about or mention before we uh, wrap things up for this week? Uh, no, I think that's it. Okay, I thought you had something that you uh, wanted to talk about real quick. No, I'm good. Okay. All right. Well, that is the show for this week. Please remember to subscribe to the Corrective Consciousness YouTube and SoundCloud pages. While get, while there, get, please give thumbs ups, likes, and five star ratings on iTunes. It helps promote and spread awareness of the show, and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going. You can also catch us on Thursday for our sister podcast, Corrective Consciousness, the podcast where we explore the inanity of pop culture. We're going to continue our uh, discussion of the uh, history of Sega. So I'm pretty excited about that. Finally, you can find me as Vise the Bold on pretty much anything. And you can follow me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. You can hit me up on Twitter at, at Lotus Prince. And finally, if you are interested in seeing my videos early, getting in on exclusive live streams, I'm currently doing the Japanese-only Echo Knight 2, as well as the original Sweet Coden. How, how'd you like that original Echo Knight? I wanted to get your impressions. It's not bad. I mean, it's not Kingsfield with ghosts. Like, there's no fighting in the game. It's puzzle solving. Um, some of the puzzles, though, like, y- you need a guide for some of this stuff. Like, some of the puzzles are just obnoxious. <laughs> like, what's the code? And then you finally find out what the code is. I don't understand. Why isn't it working? And you have to deduce that the guy was looking at it upside down, so the nines become sixes and shit like that. It's like, oh, come on. <laughs> it's very irritating. Um, but, yeah, so see my videos early, get on the live streams, uh, select upcoming games for me to Let's Play. Uh, I'm nearly done with a game that has been selected for me, The Letter, a horror visual novel, and I'm coming up relatively soon in another game that's been selected for me. This one, uh a semi-well-known Dreamcast title that I'll be playing via GOG on PC. Look forward to that. Or get in conversations with me and other patrons on Discord. Then perhaps consider swinging by my Patreon account, which can be found at patreon.com slash lotusprints. All right, everybody. We will catch everybody for our rip discussion of Sega. 
continuing one uh, on on Thursday. Catch you then. Until next time, everyone. Bye-bye.